Hello friends, in this particular tutorial, I am going to give you details how in different ways we can be able to write, read, write, append the data into a text file using codices for the different form of PLCs like Windows PLC, Raspberry Pis or PLC like Vago. So this particular feature can be utilized for many different purposes like creating a small database or using it as a remnant data where you can store the data and read it back. So in order to start, what we need to do first is we need to add few of the libraries. In order to add libraries, what we can do is we can open the library manager and then we can click on add library. And then we can search for the library called sys file. So this particular library we are going to use first. Uh, I will also give details on the next one. So here, if you see, we have different methods to read, write and do everything using this particular library. So let me create one program. Uh, for the writing the file and I'm just defining some constant variables and then some variables to incorporate how exactly this can be utilized. So first file name. So file name uh, I'm giving so it needs a path. So let me show you how exactly the path we create uh, the path which we utilize. So if you log in and go into the files part then we can see uh, the folder and there it will basically it will go and get stored. Okay. So these are the some handles which I'm trying to give. So these are the important uh, variables which we need to take care when uh, we are going to utilize this uh, sys file uh, libraries. Okay, so the error handling and uh, the, the buffer size, how exactly this has to be done. And this will be mostly utilizing the pointer. So pointer uh, we are using to get the buffer from the uh for the creating the file or writing the data to the file or reading the data from the file okay so this particular thing so uh in order to do that first what we uh, are trying to utilize is the method called sys file open so first thing which we need to do is we need to open the file or create the file into the particular folder okay so that will be the main step because for writing any data first we need to create the file so uh, sys file open method will be utilized where we need to provide the file name, uh, which file name, what we want to do. And then if you see here, uh, let me open. So this is, we have the option. So now uh, am write, okay. So am write is what it will write to the file. So you can see this access mode by going to the library. So am write is to write the data. So if file is not there, it will create the file and then write the data. Okay, so that's why it is am write we are using. And then uh, the result which we want to uh, store the result into that whether the file is created, open or we got any error. Okay, so that's that's what exactly the in the p result uh, I'm trying to do. Now uh, once we have those data and the file is open and we have the file handle. Uh, variable is having some data then utilizing that particular variable we can be able to check whether the any error or uh, the uh, in there's an invalid handle so all those things we can be able to utilize and create the logic that in in case of any error what exactly we want to do okay so that's what i'm trying to do it here that uh, uh, if my file handle is having an invalid handle then what I should be providing an error code or else what I should be doing. So if there's invalid handle, then there's an error. Otherwise, what I need to do is I need to write the file data, correct? So I'm just trying to uh, put here a, a variable which is called bytes to read because this particular variable will give me the details whether the, I have able to write the data or not into the file. So I'm utilizing here the sys file write method. Okay, and in that one, I'm putting here the H file, which is again the file handle, which is the uh, return the uh, return of the file will be there, and then uh, uh, buffer uh, I'm will be using to write the data. So the the P file data, which is um, mapped to the pointer of the byte with ADR data. Okay, so that will be utilized to write the data. Okay, after that, what I'm trying to do is. So once we have written a data, now bytes to read. So it, bytes to read will give me that whether the, it has actually written any data or not. So in that one, it will return me the values. So if the values is greater than zero, okay, it means the file is okay and data is there. But if the value is not greater than zero, it means it is an invalid file. It means that file has either the file has not been found 
or the data has not been written. Okay, so some something some issue is there. So that's what exactly uh, I'm trying to do there. Okay, and once everything is done, then we need to also close the file. So using sys file close, using the h file handle file handle, we will close the file because file handle is having all the details for the particular file. So it will close utilizing this. So let me uh, put uh, some logic to uh, write uh, the buffer uh, or the data so that we can see how exactly the fun it is functioning. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do it here. So I'm just uh, creating a loop to fill the data for the max buffer size and then uh, we can be able to put those data into the particular file and then we we can see how exactly it behaves. Okay, so let me just give some basic data files and data into this particular variable okay so let me make it true and then let me go into a debug mode okay so uh, now uh, the data has been written into data variable okay and now if you see here we have this particular file name and with the path dot dot plc logic data dot txt and the error code is saying that there is no file okay why it is telling that there is no file so let's go into the particular folder so if we see in the plc logic there's no data file okay so there's no data txt has been created why it has not been created because this particular path was wrong okay so initially i have given a wrong path so that to show this particular error now i corrected the path here okay and uh, so it should go into the plc logic into the plc logic folder and then a data text file should get created now uh, as i have uh, corrected the path so let me what we can do is let me download the code and then we can see side by side that once we uh, run the logic uh, the first it will create the file and then uh, we can see uh, how the data is getting written so let me download the particular code and go into the run mode so let me first collapse this okay and uh, let me put here yeah so let me put it into the run mode and then uh, we can see that a data file has been created here and we get here the message as fs okay means file system is okay so we have the file and now uh, let me uh, start the right data to the file so i will make it true and then the it will fill the data and then it will go into the data file so if you see here the data is getting populated we will not be able to read this particular data so i will tell you why uh, later and we have a different methods to uh, create the data into a readable format so right now it is if you see it is totally in encrypted form format okay how we will read it so let's check it out so this particular file is getting created all the data is getting written now uh, we will do to read the data so if you open up that particular file we are seeing that it is in some different format we are not able to read it but utilizing the method called sys file read so that's what i'm trying to do it here sys file read which will decrypt those particular uh, format and then it will show you the data into the readable format okay so that's uh, the difference so here it is something we can call it as an encrypted format and we need to decrypt it to read it we cannot go into directly the file and read it in the, the particular format okay so i have just provided here all the details and then uh, here also we got the fs is okay when file system is okay and let me uh, see if okay so i have put two variables into the watch window one is from the right data and another is from the read file data okay so now i will go to uh, write file and then i will start enable the bit for the write data to the file and now uh, if you see uh, the both the data are getting updated so whatever i'm writing i'm able to read it so okay let me uh, go into the read file and put it uh, into a debug mode so it will be easier to understand how exactly so now if you see here i'm in debug mode i have written a data value called 195 now in this particular scan in the read i should be able to read 195 so once i go to bytes to read and if you see the read file data also got 195 so that's how exactly uh, we can be able to read back the data 
but if you see here it is in totally uh, different encrypted format which you will we will not be able to actually read it like directly okay but uh, using sys file uh, read we can be able to read it back and then uh, we can be able to utilize into our code so basically when we have to initialize some variable or uh, from uh, the file then uh, we can read it and initialize or whatever the database we're trying to create we can store those data and then we can whenever we have to read we can read it and send it to some other uh, source okay so uh, that is the very basic thing uh, which uh, how exactly we can be able to do it using sys file uh, library for read and write part okay so uh, there are also different uh, options so as you have seen we have utilized only am read and am write but uh, we can also utilize am uh, read plus am write plus am append is also there okay but uh, so those things we can utilize so now the second uh, option uh, which i'm going to show is using ca library okay so see there's another library uh, which is uh, ca so ca file and ca type which we need to add into our library manager and then uh, so we can search here ca file with ca file and ca types so ca types external okay so these two we need to add and then we can utilize those into our code okay so file name uh, it will be ca dot file name and path we have to give file handle also will be there so these two are same uh, common thing we i'm giving you the size then it has already the methods called uh, file dot open file dot write file dot read file dot close so all those methods are already there which we can utilize so i'm just uh, putting all the values and then uh, just uh, writing uh, the very basic code so in order to what i'm trying to do it is the sequence will follow the same so it will go like first we need to uh, open the file then we need to write the data then we need to close the file or if we want to read in the data then we have to read the data correct so uh, i'm just putting that into a particular logic uh, so that uh, we can see how exactly the sequence goes okay so i'm just first first case which is uh will, will be there to open uh, check the state of the all the all the things so a state what we are doing is that uh open file uh close file uh, all those attributes what i'm doing is i'm setting it to false okay so nothing should be uh getting uh true in initially so when i have to do only at that particular time it should get true okay and then we are moving to the uh, next step so uh, next case so next case is to open or create the file so here also what we will do is file dot open file name we have to give okay once we have given the file name, so it will take it from uh, the path which we have defined in the file name okay and then uh, what we need to do is after we get the file open then set the mode so whether the file should be only in read only mode or we are into read and write mode so there are two uh, modes which uh, we can utilize here is read only and read and write so uh, that's what i've given that file mode byte equal to two so two is for uh, read and write okay and then uh, based on the file mode uh, i'm trying to uh, set all the different pa file parameters so if you see e file option it has uh, zero one so the write read read write so all those options are there so one is for uh, read and two is for read write okay and then uh, open the file execute it and once file open execution is done external will get true then we will utilize that handle for the file handling and uh, based on that uh, we can go to the next step next case so next case is what we have opened the file now we have to uh, write it okay so next is the write text to the file so in order to write we will utilize uh, same uh, uh, the one method called file uh, write okay and uh, utilizing that we will be able to write all the data into the particular file so file write dot h file so because we have opened the file so that handle we have to utilize here into the uh, h file so that we should know which file we have opened and then uh, we will put the value into the buffer okay and that's using file string which we have already defined size we are trying to calculate because what size we have to uh, put into the particular file and then uh, we can uh, utilize some timeout that if in this particular time the uh, file is not getting written or data is not getting updated then we will 
say that it is time out and then we will say that file write execute equal to true and once it is done then we will go to the next step we can also utilize uh, file write dot error x error okay and so and based on that and error scenario what we need to do we can be able to do that now uh, the next case is to close the file and that's where we will utilize the same handle because handle is having all the details of the file and then uh, execute the file goes true and then uh, go to the next step and then settle all the variables so right now what i'm doing is uh, right state i'm moving in every every switch case correct so that's what i'm moving it to right state to zero now uh, everything what we did here is to write and close now uh, another case which i'm doing is to read the file okay so in the read file everything remains same only the thing which will change is the file read dot uh, the buffer okay so the buffer we need to utilize and then uh, using the buffer only we will be able to read the data so uh, once uh, the file read is done uh, we will match whether the size of file uh, which is there and the, what we have gotten from the buffer are of the same size if they are same size then uh, we can uh, read it and uh, show it in our uh, variable okay so let me make it start to write to true and you see that it created the file and here right now nothing is written uh, so the code is going and if you see the right part is getting done so now if you open you can see here that uh, we are able to read the variables or the strings what has been written so it is getting into strings so this is another way and now i am going to the read only mode so i will not be writing anything but i will be only reading it so now if you see uh, in the file string uh, option this particular file string uh, we will be getting some data okay so okay right now this it is not able to read so let me just check okay yeah so this particular thing it is i have not given else condition so it was not going so i need to as my mode is switched to read only then the write state should be five so that's what was missing so once i have done then you can see that it is matching the size and then it is reading the data now the data which is coming it is coming in the byte but our data which we are writing is uh, we were writing into the string okay so here we are not able to read correctly so uh, what we can do here is uh, we can utilize the oscat library and then we can convert from buffer to a string okay so uh, let me show you that okay so here uh, what i'm doing is i have defined this uh, variable called file string read as a string and then using the oscat basic dot buffer to a string and here uh, i need to give the pointer to the array so uh, the pt so it will be the file read dot p buffer size will be file read dot z buffer okay and then start from what uh, position we want to start so zero and what should be the stop so i'm giving the full file size okay so to uint because it is needing into uint and then uh, once we download the code we can see that in the file string dot read uh, we are able to read the, exactly the same data what we are writing okay and in this particular manner uh, we can utilize the library to read and write the data and utilize it in our program thanks for watching that's all for this video uh, see you in the next one